Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at green flags in relationships. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. You go on a road trip together and still like each other at the end of it. Oh, <laughs> that's true. Wow, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. The ability to apologize. If your partner never sees their faults, it will never work. <gasps> That's so true. If they think everything they do is always right, then it's definitely gonna be hard for you two to be together long term. And the thing is, they can't just like apologize blankly, you know? They can't just be like, okay, I'm sorry. They have to know why they're apologizing and they have to know what they can do to fix it and actually show you that they're generally sorry, not just, okay, I'm sorry. Because anyone can say that. Anyone can be like, okay, I'm sorry and just get it done with. You generally enjoy one other's company during dull moments. Life's full of them and you are going to want a partner who you can enjoy them with. Wow, that's deep. Oh, now I feel single. I've always been happy single, but sometimes reading these posts kind of make me want someone. <laughs> If they respond well when you are dealing with a crisis situation or when you are seriously ill or when your family member is seriously ill, they may be a keeper. In other words, how do they act, interact with you during times of stress? Does the presence behavior help? Do they make it worse or do they make themselves scarce? Wow, this one is a good one for sure. Yeah, then they're always there for you when you're in a crisis. Mm, that's good because you need someone there for you when you're going through something, right? And you want someone to just be there. You want someone to just care. But if they keep a distance from you, then you know they're not the one. But I mean, you can talk forever about pretty much anything. And when something you have different opinions about becomes an interesting discussion rather than a fight. Ooh. Wow, find you someone like this where you can just talk about anything forever. That's nice. Comfortable silences. If you can enjoy each other's companies without needing a distraction, you're usually golden. Ooh. Oh, I kind of miss this. <laughs> Yo, I miss this. Being able to make each other laugh. Understanding the other person's sense of humor is critical in long relationships. And besides, do you really want to get serious with someone who can't hardly make you laugh or smile? True. I feel like humor and trust is so important in a relationship. With humor, it's so important because if you find something funny and they, someone else can find it offensive, right? Then you guys are not, yeah, you guys are not compatible in that. And it's really hard to be together with someone when you find something funny, but they take it too seriously. Yeah. Like for me, I love bantering, you know? Like I love teasing someone and I love someone teasing me back. And I just love it when people aren't too serious about it, you know? Like it's all fun and games. Like nothing is serious. It's just fun like that. <laughs> they generally like being able to do things to help you out and vice versa. This is nice. Yeah, for sure. This was one of the most romantic things my husband did when we were early-ish in our relationship. He doesn't even remember it or think it was a big deal, but it was a huge green flag for me. I was preparing to move to a new apartment and had a ton of stuff going on in my life, including trying to coordinate moving out with expensive heat treatment for bed bugs that my jerk landlord refers to be involved with. I was super stressed and drained, and when I was cleaning the fridge, one of the shelves inside literally shattered. I was basically beside myself and so frustrated because I knew that landlord was going to screw me on my security deposit, so I vented to my husband, then boyfriend, and was basically just like, I give up. Everything is the worst. The next day, he let me know that he had looked up my fridge model, found the shelf as a standalone piece, and ordered it, and it would be there in two days or whatever. I cried. I was so, so grateful. I was so overwhelmed and emotionally exhausted over the bed bugs and moving and everything else. And the fact that he saw that and just took something off my plate and handled it was such a relief. It showed me what a supportive partner he could be and it was just what I needed. Oh, so sweet. Also, when my parents' dog, which I'd grown up with, got old and stopped being able to jump onto his favorite chair, my husband, then boyfriend, built a ramp for the dog so he could still get up there to sit with my mom, and he matched it to her decor and purpose. Yo, this is a type of person we need in our lives. Yes. We just need caring people, someone who just cares and understands you, you know? Man. And obviously, we have to do the same things back, you know? <sighs> 
About four months into my relationship, I got injured. There was a chance that I wouldn't be able to walk again. My then girlfriend, now wife, said, don't worry, it's going to be okay. We can figure this out either way. I'm okay now, but just knowing she was going to stay with me no matter what was huge. We've been together eight years now. We have our challenges, but at the end of the day, we both know we're there for each other. Yeah, so sweet. Yo, these are nice, honestly. So yes, never settle for less. If you know someone's treating you bad or they make you feel bad, don't stay with them just because you feel like you wouldn't be able to find someone else. Like I said, it's better off being alone than to be with someone who makes you feel bad about yourself. Like, that's a no-no. You'd rather be single without that kind of negative energy, you know? They're okay with spending time apart. A significant other or even just a friend that can spend their own time alone and doesn't absolutely need you to be happy is a major green flag. You should make each other's lives better, not become each other's entire lives. Well, this is what I love for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just cannot stick with someone or if someone is like too clingy, I would feel suffocated. Yeah, I need time alone. <laughs> I think the thing about this is that they still keep the individuality so that's a good thing you know like they don't get lost just because they're in a relationship and you know they don't become like stuck together like that like that's kind of bad to be honest it's better that you still know what you want in life what your goals are like you keep that separate but your partner is just there for you because you want to make each other's lives better kind of thing wow this one is a good one for sure my husband and i have endless conversations there's nothing we can't talk about nothing the first time we ever chatted on the phone we talked for six hours we've been together for 15 years and still talk every day several times a day we love our breakfast time because we chat after eating and really enjoy each other's company. We love talking no matter where we are. And since he also works from home, we work together. There's lots of times we're saying nothing, just enjoying being around each other. But I love that we can talk about anything we want and it doesn't descend into an argument. Yo, this is kind of like my parents, you know. Sometimes I wonder, I'm just like, how are they still talking every day? <laughs> I'm just like, yo, they've been together for like over 30 years. Wow, I can't believe they're still talking every single day like this. Yeah, well, I guess it's because there's like new news and like new things to talk about and just new stuff in general. And my dad tells my mom whatever happens at work and they just be talking and talking. And sometimes I'm just like, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm just surprised, honestly. I never see my parents as like goals type of thing. But when I talk about them, I realize they are actual goals like obviously they have like their own flaws and like challenges and stuff but they have like defeated that and they're just still so chill with each other it's crazy if you set a boundary and they respect it if you say that you are more comfortable meeting them at the date location after they offer you a ride they shouldn't insist on picking you up yeah for sure did they return their shopping cart to the cart return after grocery shopping <laughs> yeah are you a good person or not do you return the shopping cart or not? Would you dump someone if they didn't though? You know, if your partner just leaves the shopping cart in the middle of the parking lot, would you side-eye them and just be like, you know, we're breaking up. <laughs> your morals are wrong. Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoy. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.